one in 17 of us will be living with a rare disease and potentially not even know about it. Well, this is according to research by Sanofi, a global healthcare company, who are trying to raise awareness of the importance of diagnosis and treatment. Well, TV veterans Carrie and David Grant have teamed up with members of the rare disease community and released a song to help outline the importance between music and good health. Well, I caught up with them earlier, but first, let's take a listen. Involved with Rare Disease Day for about the past five years. It's something that's uh, something we've been really passionate about. But then we were given this opportunity when Sanofi wanted to bring together a particular part of the rare disease community, which is those people with Pompe disease. So when you look at Pompe disease, it's like one in 40,000 people. So it's, it's a genetic condition, it's really rare. But then when you talk about rare diseases generally, it's one in 17 people. So actually, we're not talking about a small group of people. But the Pompey disease community, we managed to gather, were how many? Oh, over 30. Yeah, and we wanted to get them singing together as we thought that would be a great way of building the community. We thought it was really appropriate to do Pomp and Circumstance by Elgar because it's a, it's a great, it's a well-known tune. Also, the words can be rewritten to, to be much more appropriate for rare disease communities. And, and you know... The Pompey disease community are the rare disease community in microcosm because, as Carrie said, you know, there, there may be just a couple of thousand of them. But when you get all the rare disease communities together and you're talking about one in 17, you're talking about four million people. And that's a lot of people who, because they're individual diseases, are so rare, are often ignored. So that unifying of them to say, look, we're here. And, and there are people like Sanofi who are doing something about our situation and our condition. And we thought that rather than have something that was sort of, you know, that, that was pointing to the problem, we would have something that was celebrating the people with the condition. Doing it through, trying to raise awareness through music is, is a lovely way of doing it. Um, and, and perhaps also um, from, from the research that has been done, there's a suggestion that there is a link between music and good health and good mental well-being. Oh my gosh, you know, it's one of the most exciting things. When we first started out as coaches, like, I don't know, 30 odd years ago, there was so little evidence back then, but now we've got all the, you know, we know the oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, the endocannabinoidal system, all these systems in our bodies that help memory, that help well-being, that help our mental health, that help fertility, liver. There's so much uh, that the body can do one, once we're singing. So I think it's partly for us, it is about making sure that that well-being can be reached through singing, but it's, it's also just about singing together there is something about when people sing together that well there's actual science behind it actually but there, there's something about that that is profound and that's what we experienced last Wednesday on the anniversary of Elgar's death when we went into Abbey Road and recorded this song um, that was just truly special. Well, so, you know singing is the ultimate soul food when, when you get people together and they get singing, it's as though it's not just the physical health it's, and the emotional health, it's the spiritual health, it, it's, 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 it's the well-being, it's the sense of connection and human connection that you get. You, you don't really get that when you're doing anything other than singing in that in so strong a sense with such a collective, with such a collective sense of purpose. And even people who may feel at the beginning that, you know, I, I don't know if I'm good at this. When they join the collective, the whole is so much greater than the sum of the parts. And uh, being able to give people, you know, something to look forward to, it must be so overwhelming. One in 17, as you say, that's actually a really big number of people that are affected by something that is so rare. And often, I can imagine, goes undiagnosed, mistreated or, or wrongly diagnosed. So often we were talking to some of the people just last week that have Pompey disease and we're like, so how long did it take you to get diagnosed? You know, I have Crohn's disease and it took about three or four years. And I remember thinking, that's way too long. And then speaking to someone with Pompey disease and they're like, yeah, 25 years. You're like, sorry? 
you know, and by then it's how ill you are at the point that you get that diagnosis because you've gone undiagnosed for so long. And then it's the investment that we need from the health services to, to really look into rare diseases because obviously there isn't the return for pharmaceutical companies. So if you've got a pharma company that really wants to get behind a rare disease, that is that's a rare thing and it's a great thing. And this disease that you're speaking about specifically, the Pompeii disease, um, what are some of the symptoms that the people that you met spoke about? You know, and what is it like to live with this day to day? So it's a rare genetic condition causing muscle weaknesses and also breathing difficulties. But those muscle weaknesses are in the core, the core strength of the core muscles. So that means standing up, going upstairs, walking, all those things become progressively more difficult. And you can imagine what must that, that must be like for someone living with that, thinking, I'm not able to do that anymore, but I still don't even know why. So I think, uh, you know, once you meet people and also when you put faces to a disease, suddenly it becomes all the more real. It doesn't. Be, it becomes much more than a condition. Then it becomes a living, breathing, cognitive person in front of you who has had years of something that, because it's so rare, it's not even looked for, and that's the thing. And that's why the awareness of rare disease day is so important. Because, as Carrie said, people go years without a diagnosis, not because of negligence, but because what they have, their conditions are so rare that often the clinicians don't actually look for them until everything else and every other potential avenue has been exhausted.